Hello viewers, in this video lecture we are going to discuss one design problem of the T-beam girder bridge. In, in our last lecture, we have already discussed the Kurban's method which is commonly used for the design of T-beam girder type of bridge. So this is the part one of the lecture. I am continuously produce another two or three session to cover the design problem. So this is the design problem. Design a RCC T-beam girder bridge using the following data. The given data are the clear width of the roadway 7.5 meter which is for two lane road then span of the bridge center to center of the bearings it is 16 meter then the live load is IRC class A tracked vehicle then thickness of the wearing code is given as 80 mm the materials we have to use here is M25 grade of concrete and FE 415 grade of HYSD bars the question is using the Kurban's method design the deck slab main girders and cross girders also sketch the typical details of the reinforcements so let's start the design so this is, these are the given data width of the carriageway 7.5 meter then effective span of the t-beam as this 16 is the center to center distance between the two bearings as given this question so this will be the effective span of the bridge then the loading is IRC class AA track vehicle concrete we have to use is M25 grade of concrete then steel or reinforcement AP415 grade of HOSD bars then thickness of the deck slab is 200 mm then thickness of the wearing coat is 80 mm so these are all the given datas as per the question. Now in the step 2, so we have to calculate some design coefficients. So already we have designed one deck slab in this uh, bridge engineering class. So already we have covered up how to, cal how to get these values and calculate. Still I am going to repeat here. See, from the table 9, we have to take sigma CB. So, see the table 9. This is the table 9 of IRC 21-2000. So, here we have to use M25 grade of concrete. So, sigma CB value will be 8.33. So, see this is the 8.33 sigma CB. Similarly, from table 10 of IRC 21, we have to take sigma ST. This is a table 10 of IRC 21. So here we are going to use FE 415. So its corresponding permissible stress is 200 MPa. So this is the 200 MPa. Again from table 9, note 1 of IRC 21 I shall get the value of modular ratio see the note 1 the E as by EC of 10 may be adopted so this is the modular ratio modular ratio is considered as 10 so the neutral axis coefficient n equal this is the formula so after putting this numerical values of sigma st m and sigma cb i will get 0 0.294 similarly I, I will calculate the lever arm coefficient small j which is comes out as 0 0.902 then I, I have to calculate the moment factor q so it has comes out as 1.105 so these are some coefficients which are to be used when you design the bridge by using the working stress method. In this step 3, this is cross section of the deck. 
So in this step, we have to plan the deck of the bridge. See in the question, the length of the bridge, then its width, everything is given. So how many numbers of girders we are going to use? And what will be its cross sections? So these all all things we have to plan in this step. Okay, the cross section of deck. See, uh, we are going to use three numbers of longitudinal girders or the main girders and provided at 2.5 meter interval. Then the width of the longitudinal girder is taken as 300 mm. And then the depth of the longitudinal girder is 1600 mm. So how we get the 1600 mm directly? So there is a thumb rule that for every meters effective span of the bridge we will consider 100 mm depth. So as our effective depth is 16, 16 meter so the depth is uh, depth of the longitudinal girder is taken as 1600 mm. There is no perfect rule. This is one thumb rule. Then curves with 600 mm width and 300 mm deep is are provided at both sides. Then cross girders, girders are provided at 4 meter intervals. And the width of the cross girder is 300 mm. The depth is 1600 mm. The depth is similar to the longitudinal girder. The depth of the cross girder is taken as equal to the depth of the longitudinal girder to simplify the computations. There is no direct rule or method how much depth for the cross girder is to be considered but here I will take as equal to the longitudinal girder to simplify our uh, calculations. So uh, what should be the depth of the cross girder I have mentioned in the last video. So next step, so before going to next step, this is the cross section. We have taken those dimensions and based on those dimensions, I have drawn the cross section of the bridge deck and this is the plan of bridge deck. Now we will start the design of different members of the bridge deck. First I will design the interior slab panels. In the next videos, I shall design uh, different members like cross girders then longitudinal girders. So let's start the design of slab panel. First I will calculate the live load and the live load bending moments and shear forces. First I will calculate the bending moments due to the live load. So this is IRC class AA tracked vehicle. The, in this direction the vehicle is moving. In the direction of movement, the context, contact length of the vehicle is 3600. And along the width of the vehicle, the contact, contact dimension of each track is 850 mm so these two dimensions is this is required because if you if I draw the plan of one track it is like this it, it is 3600 this is 3600 and this is 850 this is the plan of one track or one wheel of the IRC class AA track vehicle so now see for the interior slab panel of IRC class A, uh, 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 slab panel, IRC class A track vehicle is the live load. For the maximum bending moment, one wheel is placed at the center of the panel as shown in figure 2. So this is the this is the wheel or track of IRC class AA track vehicle and it is placed at the center position of the panel 
so that we get the maximum bending moment due to the track or wheel. Now we have to calculate u and v. So what is u and what is v? So these are the dimensions of the track after dispersed through the wearing coat. Okay. So if you if you want to if you want to understand more clearly you can watch my last videos where I have clearly mentioned what is u and what is v with some diagrammatic explanations so i shall put the video link in this video also so u and v are the dispersed dimension of the track or wheel of irc class aa track vehicle so then I will calculate U by B and V by L. So U by B as comes out as 0 0.404 and V by L is comes out as 0 0.94. So then I will calculate the K. What is, uh, this is the ratio in between B and L. Length and width ratio. Which is comes out as 0 0.94. 6 to 5 so now I am going to use the Pigot's curve already I have explained in the last videos how to use the Pigot's curve so I am going to use the Pigot's curve for k equal to 0 0.6 and the moment coefficients are read out as so this is the Pigot's curve I have to use for k equal to 0 0.6 I, I, I shall also put the link to download the Pigot's card in the description box of the video. So this is the Pigot's card for k equal to 0 0.6. So from this curve, I shall calculate m into 100. And from this curve, I shall get m2 into 100. So, so m1 comes out as 0 0.085 and m2 is comes out as 0 0.025. Now the short span moment MB equal WM1 plus 0.15 M2. So M1 and M2 I have get from the Pigot's curve. So what is the value of W? See in this IRC class A track vehicle for each track the load is 350 kN. So W for each track is 350 kilonewton. So if I put the values of W, so I, I, I shall get MB as 31.06 and ML long span moment 13.21 kilonewton meter. Now impact factor for IRC class AA loading for span up to 4 meter is 0.25. So applying continuity and impact factors, the total live load moments are given by short span moment is calculated as 31.06 and long span moment is calculated as 13.21 kN meter. Next we have to calculate the shear force in the DAX lab for the live load. So this is our slab panel this is 4 meter and this is 2.5 meter now if you see the short span moment and long span moment in this direction of short span the bending moment is more compared to this long span so we will consider this is the span of the deck slab or slab panel so this is the span width which is 2.5 meter okay now see this is the slab and i have placed the live load in this way so already we have seen this dimension is 
sorry 3.76 and that dimension is 0.85 so if we calculate the dispersion of wheel in direction of span so this, this is the dimension of the wheel wheel in contact with the surface and after the dispersion in this direction through the slab what will be the dispersed width we have to calculate so this dimension is 0.85 and it will disperse through the wearing coat and this is the slab and total thickness is 200 plus 80 mm 280 mm okay so after the dispersion if the dispersion takes place at 45 degree angle so dispersion of wheel in the direction of the span is 1.41 meter okay next for maximum shear force live load is kept such that the whole dispersion is in the in is in the span if you see this figure all we know that if you have a beam and the load is one moving load is acting on the beam these are the two support due to this moving load the shear force becomes maximum when it is very close to the support if it moves to this position then the maximum then we get the maximum shear force so i have placed the wheel in such a way that we get the maximum shear force see after the dispersion of the wheel the dimension become this is the wheel this is the wheel after the dispersion it covers total distance 1.41 so to get the maximum shear force i should place the wheel such a way that the center position of the wheel at a distance half of the 1.41 by 2 from the support because if I place the wheel over the support after the dispersion the disperse wheel will be away from the support which is not possible so I will place the wheel in chassis with that after the dispersion the disperse dimension one corner of the disperse dimension touch the support so after the dispersion it will be like this it will be like this so this distance is half of 1.41 by 2 which is 0 0.705 so for maximum shear force live load is kept such that the whole dispersion is in the span the load is kept 0 0.705 meter from the edge of the beam as shown in the figure so which is already explained as per IRC 212000 clause 305.16.2 the single concentrated load the effective width of the slab BEF equal alpha into A multiplied by 1 minus A by L0 plus BL so now we have to understand which symbol denote what so so already we have calculated the a which is 0 0.705 it is the distance of the center line of the wheel from the nearest support face of the nearest support which is a 0 0.705 then bl it is the see this is the wheel or one track of the vehicle so its dimension is 3.76 
and this dimension is 0.85 so after dispersion in this direction this is the BL after dispersion through the wearing coat only don't confuse it is not the dispersed dimension after dispersed through the total depth of the slab it is only the dispersed dimension after dispersing through the wearing coat only now L naught it is the clear span between the two longitudinal girders see center to center distance between the two longitudinal girders is 2.5 so from the 2.5 if I subtract the half of the width of the longitudinal girder so 0.3 by 2 so I will get 2.5 2 meter small b clear span between two cross girders so b equal b equal 4 minus 2 into 0.3 by 2 so it will be 3.7 meter so we have understood the symbols which were used in this equation apart from this alpha so alpha is one coefficient so we have to calculate from one table which is given in IRC 21 so from the table given in under the clause 305.16.2 of IRC 21-2000 for B by L0 equal 1.68 for a continuous slab is obtained as alpha equal C the, this is the table so our value of B by L is 1.68 so 1.68 is in between 1.6 and 1.7 which is the value of B by L then our slab is a continuous slab so the value of alpha will be in between 2.5 and 2.52 and 2.56 so by interpolating the value in between 1.68 and 1.7 I will get the alpha equal 2.55 from this table which is given in IRC 21 so this is the value of alpha so by putting the values so I have calculated the B effective that is the effective width of the slab as 4.98 meter now load per unit width of the slab is 350 divided by 4.78 which is effective width of the slab and it will comes out as 70.28 kN next we have to calculate the maximum shear force for the slab so for this slab panel the maximum shear force I will get at the face of the support that is at the face of the longitudinal girder so if you imagine one simply supported beam A and B and this is the point load which is 70.28 acting on the beam and the span will be here 2.2 so as the support A is the nearest from the point load 70.28 so the reaction at A that is the RA will give us the maximum shear. So by taking moment about B I can calculate this RA and this will be the maximum shear force for the slab panel. 
so here we have calculated the maximum shear force as 47.76 so the maximum shear force with impact so if you consider the impact loading as 1.25 so I will get the final maximum shear force as 59.70 kN like the live load now we have to calculate the dead load bending moments and shear forces first of all I will calculate self weight of the deck slab so this is the 0.2 meter is the thickness of the deck slab that is a 200 mm and which is multiplied with the unit weight of the concrete which is 25 and I will get the self weight of the deck slab is 5 kN per meter square similarly the self weight of the weighting coat the thickness of the weighting coat is 80 mm and its unit weight is 22 so the total the weight of the slab will comes out as 6.76 kN per meter square next I will calculate K which is the ratio of P, B and L it will comes out as 0.625 and 1 by k will be 1.6 now we have to use the pigot's curve to calculate to get the values of m1 and m2 so this is the pigot's curve so why i am using this different pigot's curve because for the dead load the load is uniformly distributed throughout the whole panel of the slab so by following this curve I can get the values of M1 and M2 so how to get the values of M1 and M2 these things are already clearly discussed in, in the last video so I shall put the video link in the description box now the moment due to the dead load are computed as the short span moment I will calculate so M1 and M2 I know so what is the value of W so I have already calculated the dead weight which is 6.76 kN per meter square so if I multiply the 6.76 with the area of the slab panel which is 2.5 into 4 so it, it will give us the load in kN and the values of M1 and M2 simply I have put here so finally I will get the short span moment as 3.41 kN meter and the long span moment as 1.57 kN meter so next by applying the continuity into effect it will be uh, continuity factor is 0 0.8 so it will be comes out as 2.73 kN meter and for the long span moment it will be 1.26 kN meter so as it is a dead load no need to apply the impact factor next the maximum shear force due to the dead load so 6.76 is the dead weight of the slab panel so the reaction at the support see this is if I imagine as a simply supported beam this is the UDL acting over the, over the beam which is 6.76 which is 6.76 okay so total load acting on this beam 6.76 into the span 2.2 and the total weight acting on the beam will be equally distributed due to this two support so that, that's why for each support it will be divided by 2 so the support, support reaction at any one of the support is 7.44 so which is the value of maximum shear force due to the dead load next the uh, step number C design moments and shear forces so total design moments and shear forces 
due to both dead loads and live loads are so i have just sum up the values of the values of mb or the short span moment due to the live load as well as for the dead load which will come out as 33.79 similarly for the long span also i have sum up the values i calculated for for the live load as well as for the dead load which is 14.47 similarly for the shear force also so finally uh, i will uh, i have calculated the design moments and shear forces which will be used for further design of the slab let's start the design part design of deck slab so first of all i will calculate the effective width required for the deck slab so the required effective will d equal to root over of m divided by qb this is the formula from the working stress method so if i put the values so q already i have calculated b for the slab will be 1000 then the maximum moment is 33.79 c we have two moment short span moment and long span moment among these two the maximum one is the mb or 33.79 so I have used the maximum moment here. So the required effective depth is calculated as 175 mm. So let us adopt the overall depth be 200 mm and effective depth be 175 mm. So the area of reinforcement required for the short span is calculated as this, this formula is also under the working stress method. So if I put the values 200 we have we, we got from the IRC code then this value will be calculated D is the effective depth MB is the moment in the short span. So the required reinforcement area of reinforcement has comes out as 1070 0.32 mm square so by using 16 tor bars the spacing required is calculated as 187.85 mm so therefore i have provided 16 tor bars at 150 mm center to center along the short span okay and this is the ast we have provided next i have to calculate the reinforcement required for the long span moment. Now, effective depth for the long span using 10 tor. So, for the long span moment, as the long span moment is less than the short span moment, so the reinforcement along the long span will be above the reinforcement for the short span moment see this is the slab this is for short span so the long span reinforcement will be like this that is for that is effective depth for the long span reinforcement will be less than the short span reinforcement so d i will calculate as 162 mm so this is the diameter 16 is the diameter of the reinforcement along the short span and 10 is the diameter of the reinforcement along the long span next so using the formula which is already used we have to calculate the area of reinforcement required for the long span so just I have to put the moment along the long span and the rest of the values will be similar to the previous calculation. So it will come out as 458.35 mm square. So using the 10 tor bars the spacing required will be 171.35 mm. So therefore provided 10 tor bar at the 150 mm center to center along the long span 
and the provided area of steel will be 524 mm2. Now we have to check for shear reinforcement. Already we have designed the reinforcement required for short span as well as the long span. Now we have to check whether the shear force, whether the deck slab can reach the shear force or not. So you have to check for shear. So first of all I will calculate the nominal shear stress which is tau equal to P by BD. This is the design shear force 67.14. So for slab B is 1000, the depth will be 175 for the maximum moment corresponding to the maximum moment. So it will come out as 0.384 Newton per mm square. Now from 12A of IRC 21-2000 for M25 grade of concrete, tau max is 1.9 Newton per mm square. So, so this is the table. So for M25 grade of concrete, tau max is 1.9. So under the clause 304.7.1.2, this table is given. And from the table, I have to take the value of tau max. So according to this clause, this, this criteria should be satisfied. So see, as per clause 304.7.1.2 of IRC 21-2000, tau should be less than tau max by 2. So tau max is 1.9, it will by 2 will be point 9.5 so tau is less than 0.95 so safe next next percentage of tensile reinforcement pt i have to calculate so it will be it will be calculated corresponding to the maximum area of reinforcement so i provided the maximum area of reinforcement along the short span which is 1340 so percentage of reinforcement will be 0.77 percentage so from table 12b or irc 21 for pt equal to 0.77 and m25 grade of concrete i have to calculate tau c see this is the table this is the table our value of pt is 0.77 0.77 so it is in between 0.75 and 1 so the values of tau c should be in between 0.36 and in between 0.36 and 0 0.40 so we have to interpolate the values to get the exact value of tau c from the table which will be comes out as 0 0.363 this is the value of tau c okay now from table 12c of irc 21 for overall lab 200 mm k equal 1.2 again see the table 12c for the depth overall depth 200 so k is 1.2 so uh, permissible shear stress in concrete will be k tau into tau c which is given in the irc code if you see the irc code see for solid slabs the permissible shear stress in shear in concrete shall be k into tau c where k has been has the value given in table 12c k into tau c so it will be calculated as 0 0.436 newton per mm square which is greater than the nominal shear stress tau so k into tau c is greater than tau therefore 
destroyer stress is within the safe permissible limit so these are all about the design of dex lab thank you for watching the video if you like the video please share with your friends also subscribe my channel thank you